Hey guys, it's Michael. Welcome back on my YouTube channel and welcome back to the Weighted Calisthenics Strength Program series. In the last video, we talked about why we need RPEs in a strength training program or why we need any autoregulative component to a strength program. And as I promised you, in this video today, I want to give you four rules that make it possible for you to set up your RPEs like a pro. So definitely stay tuned for the video. We want to cover four rules so you are able to set up your RPEs like a pro. And RPE like a pro rule number one is about the frequency of a lift. And that rule is the higher the frequency of a lift is, the lower the average RPE over the course of a week should be. And why is that? Because you want to make sure that you arrive trained, but not fatigued in the next session. And the more sessions you have, the lower this RPE average over the course of a week needs to be, because otherwise you will arrive fatigued and not trained in your next session because the higher the frequency, the less recovery you have um, in between your sessions. And if you remember the SRA curves, the higher the stimulus is. So the higher the RPE, the longer the recovery time takes to really reach that adaption state with the higher performance. If you haven't seen that video, definitely make sure to go back to it. Wouldn't let you leave without an example, of course. We have frequency of one here, frequency of two here, and frequency of three here. And now, random examples, so don't focus too much on these numbers. Just want to give you an impression how this works. If I train a certain lift, as we always use the dips, let's also use the dip here. Once a week, we can go pretty intense. So you can give it like an RPE9, train very, very close to failure here. If you add that lift, another time, so you're training it two times a week, you need to make sure that the first session or the second, depending on your order, is not too heavy because you have now half the time to recover. So RPE 8 and also RPE 8 in the second session, giving you an average over the course of a week of 8. And this has a higher probability to make sure that you really have enough recovery time to achieve adaption and not to have a decrease in performance. If we're adding a third session, we want to lower that average even lower. So you can have like first session, RPE 7 in average, second session, maybe an RPE 8 because that is your heavy session, you want to get a good stimulus in. And that third session, because you're pretty fatigued from those two, needs to be much lighter because you want to be trained but not fatigued then if you go into the next week and you want to start here. So make sure that the last session then is again comparable lighter, giving you an RPE average of seven in this example. As I said, there are tons of different methods to set this up, but so you get an impression of how this works, meaning frequency of one, we have a much higher RPE average over the week versus we have a frequency of three here, where we have two points lower in the RPE, meaning that the intensity absolute and relative is much lower in that example over the course of a week because we're just training more often. And if you keep this in mind that the higher the frequency of a lift is, the lower the average RPE over the course of a week should be, then there's already a pretty high chance that you're doing a good job with your RPE management. Now going over to rule number two on how to set up RPEs like a pro, and that rule is about objective loads. Objective load means the more weight you have on the belt, the higher the objective load is. So it's not about subjective intensity, how heavy something feels, it's really about the absolute amount of weight that you are using. And this rule is the higher the objective loads are, the lower the average RPE over the course of a block should be. Remember in rule number one, we talked about a week. Now we're talking about a block. For the upcoming example, we use a block length of five, but this can differ for you. Let's take a look to understand the rule at two different objective loads and as always, we're using the dip example and we have two different top sets here. 
Example number one, we're having a top set of six repetitions. And in example number two, we have a top set of two repetitions. If you're using two repetitions, you are having a much higher objective load versus six repetitions. So there's just more amount of weight on the belt when dipping. And if we want to really use rule number two here, that means with six reps, we can have a higher RPE average over the course of block versus two reps. And how you can make that work. Example, top set, six repetition. We start in week one, moderate intensity, RPE seven. We make a small jump, RPE 7.5, another small jump to RPE eight, and a bigger jump to RPE nine in the heaviest week, week four. And we're going over to a deload, average, roughly RPE eight. Two repetitions, higher objective loads, means we're starting lower, RPE 5.5, week two, six, week three, seven, bigger jump to week number four, RPE 8.5, having an average of seven. And why are we having smaller jumps followed by bigger jumps? Because we want to reduce the risk of failing a lift. We always wanna make sure that we arrive trained here, but not too fatigued. So you want to have peak performance by the end of the block, because here you want to move the highest objective load. And if you make two big jumps, fatigue will mask your performance here, and there's a high chance that you won't make the weights you want to make, or that you cannot lift the weights that you want to um, lift. So make sure to start moderate and increase a bit higher at the end, and always apply this rule based on the objective loads that you're planning to use. If you're kinda intimidated by all those RPE training programming stuff, don't panic. You can get help in the form of online coaching. Just schedule your free consulting call for our online coaching and we can help you to really set up a program that includes all of this, that makes it possible for you to really progress sustainable, progress as injury-free as possible, and to really achieve peak performance on competition day or on your private mock meet whenever you need it. So definitely make sure to check out our online coaching offers for that. Rule number three to use RPE like a pro is about programming assistance. As you're not only training main lifts, you also need a concept to set up RPEs for your assistance. And the rule here is the higher the objective loads of your assistance are, the lower the average RPE over the course of a block should be. And after talking about the rule like this, we will also extend it a bit. Let's now take a look at what else our dip example. We're training dips in this example three times a week. First day, we have a three times six at an RPE of seven. Day two is the heavy session. We have a top set with three repetitions at eight, three back offs with an RPE of eight and five repetitions. And day three with a three times four at an RPE of eight, but with a load constraint, which is something we will cover in a future video of this series for sure. Now, the assistance in this example is the overhead press. So if we are on day one, we've trained three times six repetitions on the dip at an RPE of seven, we know next day, next training day for dips, we need to have our heavy session. So we need to be ready, we need to be prepared. If I now take a three times six overhead press at an RPE of 10, so six comparably high objective loads for an assistance after the dips at 10, then I will arrive pretty fatigued here. So not optimal. Better would be to lower the objective load by increasing the repetitions. It's still at 10, but the effect on this day won't be that big because the objective load is lower. Even better would be to split up the RPEs here to have a lower average. So you could do first set at eight, second set at nine, last set at 10, which is also a strategy that we're gonna cover in an upcoming video. So 
we can play around with the object floats or what we can do is we can lower the RPEs if we have a reasonable argument for using higher objective floats. Meaning, in that case, what would of course work properly is using the three times six for the overhead press, but giving it an RPE of eight or seven or six, depending on what your individual tolerance for working capacity on a certain day is meaning that you always need to have in mind that if you're working with higher objective floats, you need to have a bit lower RPEs as we covered in rule number two. And that is also true for the assistance. And if you want to um, keep the high relative intensities, you work on very, very high RPE values, then you can just lower the objective load because if you do an overpress on a machine three sets 15 repetitions you know stimulating some hypertrophy with that you can go very very close to failure even to failure without having significant effects of fatigue um, on that day whereas if you're doing that with high objective loads like a overpress with the barbell three times six rp10 this will most likely fatigue you a lot for that day so it's very, very important to understand the interaction. And why do I want to extend that? Because this is also true if we use rule number one in combination with this rule. Because the higher the frequency of your assistance is, also the lower the RPE average over the course of a week and then also over the course of a block needs to be. Because if you train something more often, you cannot train it as intense because recovery time is less. So rule number three about assistance is basically the combination of rule number one and rule number two applied to the assistance for the main lift itself. And probably the most important rule is rule number four to handle RPEs like a pro. And this rule is suitable for all the beginners out there watching the video. And that rule is fuck RPEs. You don't need it. You don't need that concept if you are in your beginner stage. All this load management, really in-depth planning, in-depth programming is becoming more and more important once you achieved a certain level. If you're really in that beginner stage, you don't need to worry about that. Enjoy training, try not to really, you know, get overwhelmed by all the information out there. And you can basically focus on just two things if you are in that beginner stage. And that is work in moderate ranges. That is true for loads and that is also true for rep ranges as that goes together anyway. So work in the rep ranges um, between six and 15 reps, moderate. Works for assistance, works for the main lifts, perfect. You will get, if you go back to the SRA video, um, a really good response and interaction between all the curves if you're a beginner, even uh, for hypertrophy, force output, and so on and so on, if you stick to that range if you are in that beginner stage. And second thing is uh, don't worry too much about the RPEs in regards of the relative intensity because just train to technical failure. So take a look at your training and see when is the speed of the rep decreasing? When do I use compensation movements? When is my form reaching a point that is not okay anymore? And that technical failure will probably equal for you at the beginning, an average RPE pretty close to failure, somewhere between RPE seven to nine when, you know, form gets a bit worse and stuff. So those two things here, if you consider those, that will be totally sufficient because all the other stuff is for the advanced athletes.